In this video, we'll discuss the box model and the CSS properties that you can modify on box style elements. What do I mean by box style elements? Well, throughout the series, I've split up HTML elements into two categories. There are elements that are used in line, uh, inside of, for example, a paragraph of text. Uh, here's a quick list of those that we've covered that fit into this category of being in line. The anchor, the code, the M, the I, the U, tags, the image, the label legend, the nav, the small, the span, and there's quite a few others, okay? These inline elements take up an amount of space as indicated by the line height and the font, the font size, the weight, and so on. Then there are elements that are used to produce a block of space on the screen. Typically, these are uh, used as containers that hold other items, but not always. Uh, but here's a quick list of box style, or rather block style elements that we've covered that fit into this category. The article, the aside, the body, the div, um, the definition list, definition uh, term, and definition uh, description, uh, field set, figure fig caption, footer, form, head, h1, h2, h3, and so on, header, h group, and so on, okay? And there's quite a few others as well. This is not a comprehensive list. So take a look at this uh, diagram. This should hopefully help you see the fundamental difference between inline elements and block style elements. You'll see that in the simplest terms, the biggest difference between inline and block is that inline elements flow horizontally, uh, and then when they reach the border of their parent element, they employ a soft line break to wrap to the next horizontal line. But block elements stack vertically on top of each other. Now there's some other offshoots of that idea, like setting their float either left or right. And uh, when you set the float, then there's, uh, and there's more horizontal space and the block elements will attempt to fit next to each other from left to right or right to left, depending on their float and the amount of horizontal space available. Um, We'll see some examples of this in this uh, in this lesson, but for the most part, think stacking vertically. All right, for this lesson, we're interested in the CSS properties for block elements. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the box model, and in particular, the fundamental parts of the box or the block. So you can see there's a diagram here that I've created uh, to help us understand this a little bit better. All right, so let's start by talking about the different parts of this diagram. First of all, in the innermost section is the content area itself. The content area contains your text or images or whatever content you are going to uh, place inside of this box or block, okay? And they have uh, two dimensions, a width and a height. Outside of that, there is a padding between sort of the edge of the block or the box and the content itself. Behind all of that is a background. In this case, the background is set to white. Then there is a border. In this case, it's the light gray color. Uh, and it takes up a certain amount of space as well. And it extends sort of the, the footprint, I guess you would say, of the blocks or the, boc um, the box. Uh, and then I don't have an outline shown here. We'll see some examples of outline, but it's similar to the border, but it doesn't add any space to the total width and the height or the total footprint, all right? And then there's a margin. You can see the margin I've used uh, indicated by a white, thick, dashed area around our, uh, our block. And it's the space between the bordered or backgrounded area and any other elements on the page, which you can see indicated by text that wraps around this particular block, all right? All right, so that in a nutshell is the box model. And being aware of how adding padding and margin, as well as an outline, add to the total footprint or the total width and height of that given block or box, okay? All right. So I guess the next question is what properties can be set and adjusted on a block style element via cascading style sheets? Well, that's kind of the remainder of this lesson and I created another one of my little experiments here, the lesson 16 experiment. Let's go ahead and just open that up and we'll walk through each of the given parts of this to better understand uh, the propensities of a box or a block and how we're able to modify it using padding and margins and floats and things of that nature, okay? So 
It'd probably be helpful as well to look at the source code for this in some cases. So I'm just going to keep that open here to the left hand side. All right, so you can see, first of all, in example one, I have a very simple div with a 200 by 200 uh, dimensions here, and I put some text inside of it. In the second example, I have another 200 by 200 div. However, it's quite a bit larger, as you can see in your browser. Why is this so? Because it has a 10 pixel padding and a 10 pixel border. And so you can see the net result is about 40 extra pixels because you have 10 and 10, 10 and 10 width, and the same would go with the height as well, okay? In the next example, kind of three and four go together here. We have three divs that have a value inside, and by default, their display value is set to block, so display colon block. However, in example four, I've set display colon in line, and you can see how they now line up next to each other. So it's the difference between block, which again stacks vertically, versus inline, which stacks horizontally, all right? And the same thing would be true with the H3 tags. Notice that by default, they display colon block. And so you have three H3 tags. Notice that they, by default, take up 100% of, of, uh, of the width of the page. However, we're able to uh, change that by changing their display value to inline, in which case they butt up right next to each other. Pretty cool. All right, so in example seven, I show you how uh, prior to popular frameworks that have come out within the last couple of years, uh, designers used to use this floating of divs in order to create various sections and a grid-like structure on their web page. So let me scroll down here in the source so you can see what I did to achieve this. Uh, you can see that Again, I'm styling everything in line here, which shouldn't be a surprise if you've watched the previous lessons. I only do this to keep the contact, uh, the styling in the context of each example. Otherwise, you'd have to cross-reference between a style sheet and the HTML page, and I didn't want to go through all that for these simple examples. But never, ever, ever put inline styles in your own web pages. Okay, all right. So start over again. Here we have a um, let's let me do a quick review here. Okay, so first of all. We have a div, and this first div contains a paragraph, and that div has a width of 30% and floated left and a margin right of 10 pixels. So that's this area right here, and it creates a little margin area so that the next paragraph doesn't butt up right next to it. All right, then we have, sort of in the main middle area, another div. Its width is set to 50%, and it's floated to the left as well, doesn't butt up because of that 10 margin border. Now, the beauty of this design is that as I change the scale of my, uh, or the size of my browser, everything stays pretty much in line. It'll, it'll fall apart when we start getting really, really um, uh, small here, or we reduce the width. You can see that uh, text starts running on over each other and it just doesn't scale extremely well but in some cases it does it does okay all right and then off to the right hand side notice I'm floating to the right I have a width of 15 percent containing a little navigation area okay and so that is again a very common approach to laying out web pages. There might be a little bit more to it. People take a little more precaution, but in a nutshell, that's what they're essentially doing. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here, you can see that I have an HR uh, and I set its clear both for its style. And I explain why this is. Uh, notice the HR tag in this example has a clear both applied. Uh, use this to clear out floated elements. So. If you try to remove this, and I'll just temporarily remove it, Control X on my keyboard, I'll save, and now I'm going to refresh this page. Notice what happens to the um, to the HR. It tries to put it next to the last floated item, and so it makes it a very small uh, element on the page because it's trying to stack it, floating it left, and as a result, it's floating. Uh, up against the other two floated items and it just doesn't work well. So by adding the style clear both, you're clearing out the floats for that element and therefore it begins a whole new kind of line, uh, horizontal line. 
it 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 removes itself from the current uh, from the previous floats and it goes on to its own uh, its own layer I guess you could say all right all right so then let's move on from there and take a look at some of the stylings that you can apply to your uh, block style elements and we'll start out with border styles and you can set a border style none like we do in this first div or a number of different border styles and let's just see I just made the borders 10 pixels uh, wide all the way around so here's a solid border a dotted border a dashed border a double border and then there's a number of these that kind of have a double border with an outside and an inside color here's a groove and a ridge an inset and an outset all right okay and then moving on there's this notion of overflow and you can see that uh, there are four different settings for overflow uh, and this will come uh, in handy whenever you have too much content to fit inside of a block style element. In this case, I've set the overflow equal to auto, and by doing that, uh, you can continue to see all the content, but it's rendered inside of a um, inside of the div, and there's a scroll bar that's added so you can get to all of it, which was a common technique used years ago. I don't see it used quite as often today because it obscures the fact that there is more content and I don't know that you would want to just create all your web pages this way, but it's certainly a possibility. The overflow scroll will add scroll bars horizontally and vertically. If there's just text, all it will do is just try to create line breaks and allow you to scroll one direction, but if you had an image you'd be able to, that was larger than the uh, the size of the uh, the block that you have it uh, contained inside of then you would also have enabled this horizontal scroll bar overflow hidden means that anything that doesn't fit into the boundaries of your div tag or your block style element will just get cut off the opposite of that is overflow visible where it'll go ahead and just spit it all out and it doesn't use any scroll bars it just puts it beyond the the borders of your of your block style element which is not preferable I wouldn't think in most cases but it might have special application if you're just having a trouble formatting it any other way. Okay, example number 10, padding and margin. Uh, here on a, let's see what example number 10 looks like. All right, so you can see in an H3 element, I'm styling margin left 50 pixels, okay? And you can see that I have another one of these shortcuts where we can set the the top right bottom left so think about a clock beginning at midnight so top right bottom left and you can specify uh, each of those values without having to set margin left margin top margin dash right margin dash uh, bottom all right all right example number 11 I've used this a number of times this is how we would center something using the margin left and margin right set to auto okay uh, padding on all sides 20 pixels and again you can use a shortcut here setting the uh, the pixel count top right bottom and then left and don't forget that the padding adds to the overall dimensions of the content area all right something new in uh, CSS is rounded corners uh, and so you'll see some websites that make use of this here I have a border radius of 10 pixels on all sides I think that's the right one yes and then I have the uh, only on the left top and bottom right and to get to those I set the border top left radius and the border bottom right radius to 20 pixels all right giving us a round on two corners and I see this used often in header sections to kind of give a little stylistic flair or in comment sections on blogs sometimes we'll do use uh, just certain corners to, to style it okay and that degrades gracefully so if you were to open this up in a browser that wouldn't support that it would just see square corners all right example number 14 shows the outline that is in addition to the border let's take a look at what I did here um, I set the outline color to orange the outline width to 10 pixels and the outline style to double just to call attention to it but notice that that is in addition to the border that I created for this block style element all right, so you can have kind of a double effect then, uh, a border and an outline. The outline does not add uh, to the underlying margin, padding, border, and content area that makes up the width of your block style element. All right, 
Example number 15 needs some explanation <laughs> because you don't see anything. That's because the visibility is set to hidden. All right, so you can show uh, vid uh, visibility hidden or visibility visible. And that's a common technique that's used whenever you're applying JavaScript to show and hide elements on a web page. We'll talk about JavaScript in a whole other series that utilizes this technique by setting the CSS property back and forth. It'll give you different ways to show and hide information on a web page, which is a common technique I see often on the internet. All right, and then finally, uh, another CSS property that you can set is the cursor style that's used whenever you hover over a given element. And so again, this is probably used something uh, that's a little bit more interactive like when you're creating JavaScript applications on the client and you want to change uh, in given the state you want to change the classes that are added to or removed from a given block style element dynamically you can also set then its various cursor states so by default it's just an arrow but you can see I'm setting it to crosshair in this second example default help has a little question mark off to the right hand side the move cursor, the pointer with the finger, the text gives a little carrot. Let's scroll down a little bit more here. The weight, which can be just an hourglass or in one of the newer versions of Windows, kind of that circle with uh, that rotates. The resize east, northeast, northwest, north, southeast, southwest, and south, okay, and west. All right, and so then you can also use a custom cursor, and I note here that it's risky to do because uh, you have to um, download that cursor to the end user's computer, and um, who knows, there's a variety of reasons why that may or may not work, but if you wanted to do that, you can set it like so. So cursor, and then that common URL with the open and close parentheses to access an external resource, um, and then if you can stack them so that if for some reason this won't load you can just say all right well then just go back to the default so that there's some cursor visible on the screen okay all right so that is in a nutshell the difference between inline and block style elements block style elements are represented by a box model the box model has several parts um, content content has background padding it has a border a margin may even have an outline uh, and so just keeping that model in your mind as you are working with uh, styling up your web pages so that you can make the appropriate adjustments to make everything lay out just nicely we looked at a plethora of CSS properties for the box or rather block style elements and um, we're getting close to the end if you follow along this far you're doing great hang in there just a couple more lessons and then you'll have the stuff on your belt uh, I would recommend once again if you haven't already decided to do so take a few moments a day or so uh, and create the little cheat sheet like I did fully exercise all of the CSS properties that are available for block style elements so that you really get this firmly cemented uh, and under your belt okay See you in the next video. Thank you.